Trump pe, pe vremea Dacile. De regulă, bărbații nu vin și punem în comună de plante sub pedale. Comună și de plante sub pedale. There will be a proceedings volume for this conference. Our plan is to, uh, uh, well, let me not say any more about the plan. There will be a proceedings. Uh, you will receive an email. All speakers, all uh, speakers at both plenary and parallel sessions will receive an email when we've all recovered a bit. We'll let you know the details at that time. I feel it's a long day. So, uh, uh, Field. Let A be a finite dimensional algebra of finite representation type. Then uh, uh, you all know that Auslander algebra of A is gamma A, which is the endomorphism ring of E, I take the opposite of it, where E is the direct sum of one copy. In decomposable. A and because it's finite, the representation that is only finite in terms in the sum. And of course, um, uh, if you want to know what an Auslander algebra looks like, you could take A to be the commutative square and draw an Auslander right and quiver there. The, our standard algebra would be given by the quiver with relations where you've got to reverse all the arrows in that quiver because I took the opposite of the endomorphism and quotient out by the mesh relations. Now, uh, we already heard in Yama's lecture, first lecture, that this uh, passage from an algebra A to a larger algebra that contains it because the outstander algebra contains the original algebra, um, as an eigenpotent E in gamma A, whose such a corresponding corner algebra is A, E is just the projection onto the algebra A, which is the sum of one copy of each indecomposable projected module. So this, this passage from an algebra A to a larger algebra that contains it, maybe an endomorphism ring, is the model for non-commutative de-singularizations. <coughs> um, uh, but what I want to tell you is, actually even in this original case of the Auslander algebra, it's not the Auslander algebra that you necessarily want. It's some variation on it. So, what, so my, aim is to, my aim is to tell you, firstly about, I want to define a variant of the Auslander algebra, algebra, which we call the projective quotient algebra, algebra, we denote it in B, BA, to show the algebra it depends on, finite representation type algebra. And this, our definition uh, is for, yeah, for algebras of finite representation type, but special cases 
a special case was already known, if, if A is the path algebra of a Dinkin quiver, okay, Q of Dinkin quiver, this algebra was already introduced by, uh, to to Chirelli and Chirelli. <coughs> Reinecke and um, also do independently to Hernandez and Leclerc And uh, a later paper of Trulli, Relli, Feigen, and Reinecke shows that the algebras are actually the same. And our definition of the projective project algebra is an easy generalization of their definition. And we're going to use this to study not non commutative e singularizations, but actual commutative geometry. So we'll use it to um, uh, use to use to study desingularizations to obtain to get desingularizations of um, Grossmannians Grossmannian of all d-dimensional submodules of an A-module M, <coughs> when we're doing algebraic geometry here, the field will become algebraically closed. Um, yes, so this is singularization in this case of a Dinkin quiver is due to Chirini, Reilly, Feynman, and Reinecke. Uh, there are some generalizations, there was some attempt to generalize it to other algebras. Keller and Shrotska uh, dealt with the case of an iterated tilted algebra of Dinkin type. Shrotska dealt with self injected algebras of finite representation type. We should go to all algebras of finite representation type. Um, and thirdly, to get at use to construct to realize orbit closures O M bar, the closure of an orbit in the, the variety of representations of the algebra A of dimension vector D as quotient varieties. thing about uh, our generalization is that this unifies uh, on the one hand this work of Chirulli, Reilly, Feigen and Reinecke, uh, the paper of 2014, building on uh, 2013 paper, and together with the famous work of uh, Kraft and Pachesi, 1979, where they show that closures of conjugacy classes of matrices are normal varieties. The way they prove that conjugacy classes of matrices closures being normal, the way they prove that is uh, first to reduce to the case of nilpotent matrices, and that means you can study representations of the algebra kx mod x to the n. And so they're studying orbit closures, essentially not in that language, but orbit closures in the representation variety for this algebra. And this is an algebra of finite representation type. And it's a self-injected algebra. And for self-injected algebras, our algebra, the projective quotient algebra, is actually the same as the, as the 
our standard algebra. So that fits into this. And, and the CIFR work is for, again, for think far thousands of thinking figures. So that, that's my aim. So the projective quotient algebra is actually rather easy to define. So let me give you that. The definition. The projective quotient algebra. B, of a, B sub A, and it's the endomorphism ring of a certain object in a certain category, and we take the opposite again, where H, H is the category of, you look at the category of all, category <coughs> of all surjective maps, P onto X, where P and X are A modules, this is P projective, and there's a natural such category where the morphisms are given by commutative squares. So, and it's not quite that category, we quote it out by all morphisms factoring through the subcategory morphisms, factoring through subcategory, consisting of all maps from a project, identity maps from a project itself. Okay, well, there's another way of thinking of this. This is the homotopy category. Category of two term complexes. P mapping onto X. So look at all the, the homotopy category deals with all complexes of modules. We only want complexes with two terms. The rest of the search should be zero. And we want a projective mapping onto some module. And when you take the homotopy category, you factor out by all maps that are homotopic to zero. And that's the same as factoring out by that subcategory. And now uh, that's the category H. And what's G? G is the direct sum. Well, one copy of each in decomposable in the category H. And the indecomposables in this category H are rather <coughs> easy to it's easy to see what they are. Uh, there's two types. You could either take uh, U to be a, uh, X, actually, X, an indecomposable A module and you just take the projected cover of it, mapping onto it, X. Or you could take a projective mapping to zero, and then we want an indecomposable projective. So yeah, PI is an indi one of the indecomposable, indecomposable projective, any module. But I've, I've got one little thing wrong there. We were supposed to quotient out by all objects of this form. So we want to throw away some of these objects. We want to throw away the objects which consist of a projective A module with its projective covering. So indecomposable, non-projective. Firstly is, there's an idempotent 
in the projective quotient algebra such that it picks out <coughs> the algebra A. Namely, E is the projection onto the object which is just A mapping onto zero, which is the direct sum of all the unique things of that form. So that's one of the properties. And the other property that I'll mention here is that the global dimension of BA is always at most two. More properties than that are, I will state, but we'll need some more terminology first. So let's have, a, let's have this example. If A is the commutative square, here's the Auslander Eisen quiver. Let's first of all have a picture of this category of surjective maps. It's got uh, the projective covers of modules. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll write this as, maybe I'll put a round bracket x around it. And so, so each of these gives an object in that category if I just put a round bracket around it. But there are some more objects, so that the pi goes to naught. And let me write that as an i in a square bracket. I don't know the notation. I in a square bracket. And let's try, maybe we use some colours for that. That's what the pen works. That would be nice. We can call this i. Is that red visible? So, so where do those go? Two goes here. Three goes here. There's rules about where to put these in, uh, at least in the quiver case, due to Chirulli, Reli, Feigen, and Reinecke. And I think they look very general. So you put each, each of them has got the corresponding simple going to it, with a map to it, irreducible map to it. And it's got an irreducible map to tau minus of the simple. Okay, that's, that's there. So, so that's the outside of the right but just of, of this top category. It's just an additive category, but it's got an outside of the right Now we want to factor out through the subcategory of all what P to P's. So we want to factor out those, those are the modules where X is a projected module in round brackets. So we want to delete those. So let's delete those. There's a projective. There's a projective, there's a projective, and there's a projective. We want to delete those. And if you don't mind that, I'm just going to actually delete them. <laughs> okay, and then the final step is, that's a picture of the outside of the item group, but we actually wanted to take the opposite. So I've got to reverse all the arrows, so sorry about this. <laughs> if you didn't write it in pencil, you've got the problems. Projective quotient algebra in this case is the path algebra of this quiver subject to the mesh relations. Right. Now, to tell you more about the projective quotient algebra, we've got to we've got to exploit this idempotent in it. E. E is E is the sum of these four red trivial idempotents. And E, B, B A is the part of the whole thing, 
got to use this idempotent to pass between the algebra BA and A. And, we, and the general setup for doing this is as a so so, so given an idempotent idempotent E in an algebra B, now B, these, these are now going to be an arbitrary algebra, because this is such a nice thing, it's, it's worth knowing all this. Given an idempotent E, there is a functor from B modules to E, B, E modules, which are also called E. That functor E of a module N is just left multiplication by E. And this fits into a recolmor of abelian categories. So this has got a left adjoint and a right adjoint, which you can write using tensor and hop, tensor product and hop functor. And there's also on the left B over BEB mod. And there's the inclusion, and there's a the left adjoint and a right adjoint. You get a recolmon. There's a recolmon. There's a recolmon of Abelian catalytes. And whenever you've got a recolmon of Abelian categories, there is what's called an intermediate extension functor. You get another functor here, C, called the intermediate. intermediate <coughs> and it's the commands come from Bayes and Bernstein to Lee, BBD. And the intermediate extension functor is already in that work. It's used to construct parallel sheets. So, so what is it? This left adjoint and the right adjoint, there was always a natural transformation from the left adjoint to the right adjoint. And so, because that's a natural transformation, you can apply that to any module, and you get a map of modules. There's a map of B modules, and you just take the image of it. generality, you get lots of nice properties from, for this intermediate extension function. So properties, which are probably known, but probably, might, be, might be known for Bayless and Bernstein to leave, but they're in, nicely in a paper by Coons. E of C of M is isomorphic to M. If you start off with M, you apply C you apply E again, you get back to what you started off with. Uh, another property, C of E of N is always a sub of N. And if you put those two together, and think about it a moment, you <coughs> see that every module M in here, or objects in this obedient category, lifts is the image of something under E, and C of M is the unique smallest thing it can be an image of. So it's the, it's the best thing, the smallest possible thing that you get M as an image of. Other property, uh, C, I won't write, write them, I'm running out, I don't know so much time. C preserves Mono, it's not exact, but it preserves monos 
connect these. It sends symbols to symbols, and it's fully faithful. Fully faithful. See, it's fully faithful. And maybe, maybe it's good to see an example. So B here could be just this path algebra, 1 to 2 to 3. And E could be E1 plus E3, so that, so that A, so that E, B, E, E, B, E is just 1 to 3. Oops. 1 to 3. Then the functor E takes a representation of B, three vector spaces, and it just forgets the middle vector space. What about the functors in the reverse direction, L, R, and C? L would take a, a V1 to V3, and it sends it to V1, identity to V1, to to V3. That's L. That's L. R sends it to V1 with F to V2. And then the identity. Oops, to V3. No. Then the identity to V3. And C is the image of the natural map from that to that. And it just sends representation. It just takes the image of it puts that in the middle. So that's a that very nice function. So what can we what can we say about the intermediate extension functor for our projective quotient algebra? Projective quotient algebra. The projective quotient algebra B A of A. There's a formula for C. C of M I'm going to tell you what C of M is. M is an A module. But I'm going to cheat. I'm not going to tell you a B module because because the way B was constructed, <coughs> modules for it, is the same thing as functors from H opposite to abelian groups. That's an equivalence. <coughs> you just send some functor to be evaluated on the object G to be used. <coughs> so, so C of N, I don't have to tell you that module, I can tell you what functor it is. You easily get the module just by putting G in. To tell you what the functor, I tell you what the evaluation is on an object in here. An object in there is a P mapping onto an X. And what you get is, it's just a co-kernel of a natural map from HOM XM. Injection unit into form B. Okay, and using so that's a little bit playing around to find that. So using using that, one can show that the projective dimension of C M, projective dimension of that as a BA module now, is less than equal to one, and the injective dimension. Injective dimension. Injective dimension in CN is less than equal to one. To get the projective dimension is less than equal to one, you construct a projective resolution. Maybe I'll write points down. C of N. I want to tell you some projective B modules. Well, that's the same thing as representable functors on H. And the representable functors are just um, just home blank to project cover event and all. 
on length to project a couple of end to end. And the bit of diagram chasing shows that that's an exact sequence, so that's the projected resolution. And if you use that projected resolution to compute x, you get another thing that x1 ba of any c of m with c of an n prime is always zero. And that's really a very surprising and unusual thing, and that it, the projected quotient algebra is exactly designed to make that happen. And it doesn't happen if you take, say, the Auslander algebra and use the eigenpotent in that. You certainly don't get x1 vanishing when you, when you use it. So that's that's what's worked. Now let's think about let's think about the module C you get when you apply the intermediate extension functor to E, which was the direct sum of one copy of each indecomposable A module. You get a module of projective and injective dimension at most one, with no self-extensions, and C is fully faithful, so the number of summands of that is the same as the number of summands of E. The number of summands of E is the number of indecomposable a modules. And that was the number of vertices in the outside right and quiver. And when we constructed the quiver of B, we added some new vertices, but we deleted the same number. So we've got the same number of vertices in this. So this module has the right number of summands to be is a classical tilting and co-tilting module. And in fact, let me give you a little theorem that we can use to, to characterize projective quotient algebras. Um, a basic algebra, algebra B is a projective quotient algebra for some A if and only if it has it has, has global dimension at most two. And it has a tilting, co-tilting module C with the following properties. Firstly, that the modules generated by C, which are also co-generated by C, are actually in add C. And that if you look at the kernel of the Hom functor from C to blank, that's, you look at all objects with no homomorphism from C, that should be the same as the objects with no homomorphism to C. <coughs> right, now the projective quotient algebra is quite like the um, Auslander algebra. And I can tell you more precisely the relationship between them. So here's a theorem about the Auslander algebra, no, about Auslander algebras in general. So a basic algebra, algebra gamma, is an Auslander algebra. if and only if it has global dimension at most two, and, well now you know the, class, the characterization of our standard algebras, something to do with dominant dimension, but that's not what I'm giving you here, and there is a, is a tilting, co-tilting gamma module, T, which is generated and co-generated by a projective-injective module. Sorry. 
projective injectives. Projective injectives. Furthermore, moreover, in this case, T, if basic, is unique. So up to multiplicity of some ends. There's a unique tilting, co-tilting module generated and co-generated by projected injectors. So this is this is really quite easy. Let's just let me just say say one direction. If you've got an Auslander algebra, the dominant there is the characterization of Auslander, which says that the dominant it has dominant dimension at least two. So there's There's an exact sequence where these are projective injected modules in the minimal injected resolution. The first two terms are, are projective, so there's an exact sequence where those are projective injected. So if you take this, you can just take you can take T to be the image of F direct sum for projective injectives. Okay, and once we've got uh, once we've got that an Auslan algebra has a uniquely determined nice tilting module, then of course, what's the endomorphism ring of that going to be? The projective quotient algebra. And M A T of is isomorphic to the projective quotient algebra. And of course, that's just because because this 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 module, the endomorphism ring of it actually was gamma ray, so it actually tilted to gamma ray, and you can tilt back. Okay, next. Uh, so that's the projective quotient algebra. Now I want to explain the applications to some geometry. So for the geometry. We need the field K to be algebraically closed, and we want to have some dimension vectors. So let's think about an algebra B <coughs> that's given as a quotient of a path algebra by some ideal. Let's make it an admissible ideal, maybe so it needs to be. Um, and A is going to be given by some eigenpotent E, which is a sum of sum of the vertices of Q. Oh, let me call it QB. That's the quiver for B. And then A is EBE. E. And you can write that as the quotient of some other quiver by some other idea. But the vertices of this quiver correspond to the vertices of B that you use in this sum. And so a dimension vector, a dimension vector, vector for B is of the form D comma R with D a dimension vector for A. And if we were in this picture, situation of this picture, a dimension vector of A would give you a, a, an integer natural number at each of the red vertices, and R would be a natural number at each of the other vertices, and you put them all together, and you've got a dimension vector for the whole thing. And you can consider the quiver Grassmannian for A for some A module. <coughs> it's a set of all d-dimensional submodules of M. 
where m is an a, some a module. <coughs> There's the quiver glass manion. We'd like to have a, we'd like we'd like to know all sorts of things about quiver glass manions. I don't I know almost nothing. Uh, but we'll try and get a desingularization. It's not quite going to be as easy as this, but we can think about we can apply the intermediate extension functor to M. We can choose some dimension vector. Uh, now taking the projective quotient algebra, we can choose some dimension vector for that. And the functor E, which forgets all the black vertices in the picture, gives a map of varieties like that. And this squibber glass manion is nice. The module C of M has projective dimension at most one, injective dimension at most one, no self-extension, and the algebra BA has global dimension at most two, and Chiruli, Arelli, Feigen, and Reinecke show that those conditions, if you take them all together, ensure that this is smooth. Now, that's not quite getting the desingularization. Uh, Maybe I'll just, yeah, maybe I'll say, okay. So you've got to do a little bit of work to get the desingularization. I'll just try and, try and say it quickly. This quiver glass manion, you can write it as a disjoint union of strata where N runs through the isomorphism classes of modules of dimension D. And uh, this writing might not be irreducible, but it's irreducible components, because these strata are irreducible, it's irreducible components are closures of some of these strata. So you have to look at which strata occur, then inside the appropriate quiver glass manians for the projective quotient algebra, You can look at this. this is a smooth variety, and you can look at the stratum given by C of N I and its closure, and that's actually a connected component of this variety. And if you if you take all of those together, they have a natural map to here, and that's a desingularization. So That was quiver glass manions. What about orbit closures? We want to realize orbit closures as quotient varieties. So now I take the fields to, to have characteristic zero. So E induces a map from the representation variety of representations of B. B is an, al B is an algebra. Here, here's B, some algebra. A given by an idempotent. We can look at the representation variety of this. We map to RA of D. So, E induces such a map on representation variety. It just consists of, take the representation variety of this, a set of all linear maps, the three vector spaces, satisfying all these relations, and you just forget all the black vertices. And you get a, represent, a representation of A. Now, you've forgotten those vertices, so actually this map is independent of basis change for those vertices you're forgetting. So actually you can quotient out by the quotient, affine quotient variety by the group GLR giving basis changes in the vertices you're forgetting. And that map, this is a closed embedding, embedding. For characteristic zero, the field must have characteristic zero. 
and this ideal IB ought to be an admissible ideal. B must be um, finite dimensional, and, that's, and the vertices must correspond to primitive eigenpotents so that the simple B modules are determined by their dimension vectors. Why is that a my time's a bit short. Uh, why is that a closed embedding? To show that a map of affine varieties is a closed embedding just means you've got to show that the map on coordinate rings is surjective. And the coordinate ring of the quotient variety is just the ring of invariance. Now, there's a theorem of telling you about invariance for representation space of an algebra with the action of the group corresponding to all of its vertices. It's the first fundamental of theorem of invariance theory for, for representations of group for algebras by uh, Le Brun and Pachesi. Here we don't have an action of all the vertices, generally in groups of all the vertices, but there's a process called deframing where you stow away some of the vertices just amalgamate more than one into the vertex. Deframing. And so that, that shows that that's a closed embedding. So if we want to show, so, so we can use that to show that. Together, if M is an A module, Dimension D, and BA, the projected quotient algebra, then the orbit closure is isomorphic to the quotient variety, R, BA, or the dimension vector should be that of C of N <coughs> modulo, oh, well, R, D, DR, modulo GLR. So it's a closed embedding. We've just got to show that the image of that map is the orbit closure. I've got a lovely argument that I would explain to you if I had another 10 minutes, showing that it follows from the formula for the intermediate extension function. In the end, the final thing is Zwawa's theorem that the generations of representations of algebra of finite representation types is given by the whole model. Yeah? That's what it comes down to in the end. So, so that's, the, that's the construction. Uh, final remarks. Uh, firstly, we can modify, whenever you see a, a quotient variety like that, the affine quotient variety, we must immediately think about what if we take a GIT quotient instead? And you can use that to get uh, a desingularization of the orbit closure. But Zwa already has a desingularization of orbit closures for representation of uh, Second thing is some motivation behind this. Uh, Kraft and Chasey were interested in proving normality of orbit closures, of closures of conjugacy classes. We would love to be able to prove normality for orbit closures of representation finite houses. Of course, it's known for Dinkin's rivers of type AN and DN by Bobinski as well. You, the unibranch property, the orbit closure is always, the maximum normalization of the orbit closure to itself is always uh, a bijection. As well, but we have nothing to say. And the final thing is, this projected quotient algebra is constructed from the outsider algebra by this by this trick of we constructed this tilting module by using we have this sequence naught to gamma to <coughs> pi prime to pi double prime, and we constructed a, a tilting module using that. That's an example of, of a shifted. Uh, tilting module, and there's a process of shifting algebras of uh, dominant dimension uh, up to their dominant dimension. And that's worked out in a theory of, of Matt Pessman and Julia Sota. And if you wanted to go to the talk on it, I'm afraid Sota spoke on it, but it was on Monday. <laughs> you, can ask, you can ask them about it. And, and that is the end of my time, so thank you.
Uh, maybe, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but maybe you should try, try that last word, talking to the authors of that last, last word. I, I don't know if it's... Thank you.